evening everyone and uh, what a beautiful day uh, we've had and uh, it's lovely to join together uh, on this at the end of this evening and uh, to come and bring our worship to God with our evening prayer. Uh, if you're watching this at home uh, it's lovely to have you with us too and we pray God's blessing upon you and that you might know God's presence as you watch. So we're going to uh, think a little bit this evening about sitting at the feet of Jesus. So we're going to turn to hymn 325 for Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Thank you. 
say together the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. We stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, for the Lord's name be praised. We turn to page 93. Our psalm for tonight is Psalm 73 and is found on page 675 at the back of your prayer book. Page 675 and we're going to say verses 23 to 28. And we'll read them all through together. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Amen. Please be seated. What wonderful words we have there, that we can draw near to God, for he is our refuge. We're going to continue uh, with our lesson, which Margaret is going to read. The lesson is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Here ends the lesson. And we will hear a little more of Martha and Mary in a while. But first, we're going to stand and say together the Apostles' Creed on page 95. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our roots, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for the Seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, Nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to say together the third college on page 97. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee. O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, in the stillness of this moment, whether we are present here in this place or whether we are watching this recording, we pray that by your presence you will surround us with your love, that you will fill us with your peace, and you will strengthen us with your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Margaret read to us that wonderful passage of the two sisters, Martha and Mary. And what struck me was the fact that 
we only have this moment. Sometimes we can get caught up with looking and worrying about too far ahead, but really, we only have this moment. I was reminded as I, as I read the story and I listened to it once again of uh, my mother and my gran. And when I was growing up, uh, I often remember hearing my mother say to her mother, Mother, will you stop working and will you come and sit down a minute? And of course, time passed and my granny passed on. And now we can find ourselves saying to our own mother, uh, and, Mother, will you stop working and come and sit down for a minute? It's interesting because I was talking about this fact as well um, with someone last Sunday after the service. And, um, you know, for some of us growing up, you know, it really was a bit of a sin to actually find yourself sitting down and resting. It sort of went against everything and the worth, eth worth eth eth ethic that uh, we were brought up with. But there was also that sense, which I th think we forget sometimes, that always on the Sunday, Sunday was a day of rest. It was a day that you sat down, a day when only the essential things um, had to be done. Of course, growing up I lived on a farm, so the cows still had to be milked. But it was a day when we went to church, it was a day for my dad when he had a chance to uh, sit and read the newspaper, um, something he didn't get a chance for the rest of the week. So rest is important. Of course, we also know that in the book of Genesis, where God created the world, he took time to rest on the seventh. So let us join our two sisters again, Martha and Mary. Martha, the one who is always busy, rushing around, doing things, and Mary, who it seems was happy to sit. Um, I, looking back, can remember well, I had two sisters, but one of them was nearer in age to me, and we often had those sisterly squabbles as to whose turn it was to do the washing up or the drying up and I think these things are common in, in every family and no different with Martha and Mary. And of course it's good to be busy but it's also good to take time to come aside. And here we find Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha busying around the house doing all the things that need to be done when somebody calls. And Jesus calls to Martha, 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 come and sit down. Those things can wait a moment. Don't worry, you're getting awful flustered. Just come and take time and sit down. And you know, both physical and spiritual rest is important for our bodies. You know, it, all of us these days, um, I don't, don't think I brought my phone in with me, but very few of us these days go without taking our phone with us. In fact, if we forget it, we feel sort of like a part of us is missing. But we always find it's vitally important to, at some point in the day, plug that phone in so that it gets recharged. Because we know that if it doesn't get plugged in, then it won't work and serve its purpose. And sometimes as human beings, we need to remember those same facts. We need to take time to recharge to get plugged in, if you like. So Jesus is saying to Martha, look, Martha, just come here for a moment. You only have this moment to sit. 
And little did they know Martha and Mary sitting there that actually that was a moment in history that they were making. The fact that Jesus was crossing all bounds of culture and not only teaching women, but allowing two women to sit as his students at his feet. It wasn't done. And Jesus always reached out. He reached out beyond the unacceptable. He was radical. This wouldn't have been popular in the culture that he was in. For them, it was an honour. It was an acceptance. It was exciting. It was inspiring. And Jesus is saying, Martha, the dishes will wait. But this moment, don't miss it. And how often are we like that? Sometimes we're so thinking ahead or uh, not that of course it's wrong to think and plan ahead but sometimes we can be so living here that we miss the moment. The moment is all each one of us have. We mightn't understand it. We mightn't even like this particular moment. If it's a physical rest our body needs, sometimes we might like being told by our families, sit down and rest a moment. Take your rest. And Jesus is saying we need to take our spiritual rest too. Why are they sitting at his feet? Because, as we hear in scripture, he is the one who has the words of eternal life. Sitting at the feet of Jesus shows a sign of respect, a sign of submission to him. It also acknowledges that we can't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves from our sins. Oftentimes we can't save ourselves from our situation. And it's as we surrender to him that he saves us. He saves us in life. He saves us in death. What does sitting at his feet look like? Well, it's about taking a moment. Sometimes it's just stopping where we are and listening to the silence, listening to his voice on a day like today, stopping to admire and wonder at his handiwork. We can take time to read the Bible, to read books about him, to pray, to chat to him about those things that we're not sure of, we don't understand, that we enjoy. It's about taking that moment to listen and learn from him. And so, as we think about those two wonderful women, as we go out into another week, into all the situations that we face, let's remind ourselves that Jesus calls us just to enjoy the moment. He calls us where necessary to take our physical rest for the healing of our bodies. And he takes us and calls us to take our spiritual rest, that we might be renewed, that we might be refreshed, that we might listen to him, we might enjoy his company and all he has to teach us. So may God bless you, each one. May God bless you in this moment as you rest in him. For he is the one 
who is able to keep us, to save us in all our situations. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We find our prayers on page 98. Almighty God, who rulest over the kingdoms of the world, we commend thy merciful care the people of this land, that being guarded by the providence, thy providence, they may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of this state and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, that they may serve thy people faithfully, to thy honour and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, source of all authority and wisdom, God, guide by your Spirit those who represent us in the Dáil and Chandler, as representatives of the people. Keep them humble. As legislators, make them compassionate. And as politicians, defend their integrity. So may the proceedings of the Oireachtas serve the truth and promote the common good. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the servant Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone work his great marvels. Send down upon our bishops and clergy and all people committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all humankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend thy fatherly goodness, all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body or estate. We pause as we add our own prayers. May it please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. We say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercy that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy grace 
not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn for tonight is that wonderful hymn, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome
with us this evening. And we pray God's blessing upon each one of you and upon your families and upon your situation. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.